Hi everyone, welcome back to the project management processes in the project management body of knowledge. This one in particular is monitor and control project work. And we can see where it fits. We're now moving across into the monitoring and controlling process group where we're wanting to make sure that the project is tracking and controlled so it's not going off course, we're not spending way more than we thought we would. This is very important as part of managing a project uh, to monitor how a project is going and control it to make sure that it's uh, as expected and being delivered as we expected. And as you can see, uh, we're, we're sort of doing all of these processes as part of this as well. Things like validating the scope, making sure that it, it was, you know, it's delivered in the way that we wanted, uh, controlling the schedule to make sure that it stays on track, controlling our costs to make sure that we're not spending too much, controlling our resources to make sure that we've got the right resources for the job, and a lot of other things as part of this overall process group. Monitoring and controlling the project work is the process of tracking, reviewing and reporting the overall progress of the project to meet the performance objectives defined in the project management plan. Of course, we're coming back to that project management plan, which is our overall plan that gets updated over time. So it's sort of an iterative document, you might say. We're updating it, make sure uh, if something needs to be changed changing it and putting it back into the project management plan. But we're monitoring that work as it goes along uh, to make sure that it still meets what we set out in that original plan. And it allows stakeholders to understand the current state of the project, to recognize any actions that have been taken to address any performance issues, like any costs going off course, schedule going off course, scope needing to be changed, and to have visibility of into the future project status. So if it's going off course now, maybe it's going to go off course in the future, for example, and we want to steer that back on course and uh, you know need to take the corrective actions appropriate at the time. Um, and so future project status with cost schedule, forecasts, and of course, scope and quality is involved there too. An overview of this particular process is it's, it's, this process is concerned with comparing the actual project management performance against the project management plan. So here's what we planned and here's where we are. And uh, so maybe we want to bring ourselves back down to where we had planned or where we wanted to be at this point in time. We're assessing the performance periodically to determine whether any corrective or preventative actions are, need to be taken. And sometimes if those actions need to be taken, that is a change request that goes through the change control board as part of the change management plan. All of these things are starting to tie together. There is definitely a lot to remember, but you'll see them come up time and time again for the reasons that they use in the project management plan. We're checking the status of individual project risks. We're maintaining an accurate, timely information base concerning the project's products. Are those products you know, uh, accurate? Are they going to be delivered in the right way for what the customer wants? Providing information for forecasting, forecasts uh, for cost and schedule information, monitoring implementation of approved changes as they occur. If we need to make a change, then we make that change. How's that gone? Is it the way that we wanted? We're ensuring that the project ultimately stays aligned with the business needs. Inputs, tools and techniques and outputs for this particular process, monitoring and controlling project work, where our input is the project management plan. We obviously need the project management plan uh, to see what our plan is for this particular piece. Uh, project documents like basis of estimates, cost forecasts, any issues, quality reports, milestone lists, all of those things. Work performance information, how has our project tracked to date? That's going to be an input to see if we need to make a change. Any agreements that have been made that we need to refer to, and EEFs and OPAs. We've got tools and techniques that we will need to use as part of this process. Is any expert judgment from particular people? Data analysis, so we're analyzing how the project's gone. Do we need to control it or bring it back on course? Decision making, we might have to make a few decisions, sometimes some tough decisions. Maybe a piece of scope isn't what we wanted and we need to you know, change it and it's going to cost more. These are tough things that we have to bring back uh, and raise the, go through the appropriate processes uh, through the change control board, make sure everyone is aware that this is happening. And of course, meetings will help facilitate all of these things. 
Now work performance reports are an output, change requests might happen as well, project management plan might be updated, and project management documents might be updated as an output of monitoring and controlling project work. As you can see, there are many processes that have an input into monitoring and controlling project work, which makes a lot of sense because we're executing on that work and now we're needing to monitor and control it. Monitoring includes collecting, measuring and assessing measurements and trends to give the project management team insight into the health of the project. And that's where that, uh, where that project management information comes into it that we're going to need to use uh, to assess that and monitor those things. Control includes determining corrective or preventative actions or replanning and following up on an action plan uh, depending on where the project is up to. So again, it's comparing the actual or what we had planned um, to what is actually happening and then potentially providing forecasts based on that so that we know where we're going to be in the future as well. Let's look at the inputs. We've got the project management plan. All components of the project management plan will be an input into this because we're needing to see what the plan is, execute on that plan, and then control that plan and make sure it stays on track. The project documents as well will be an input, cost forecasts, basis of estimates, what did we estimate uh, that, that happened and why. The assumptions log, what assumptions have been made. Milestone list, what milestones are we tracking to and have we met them so far. Quality reports, so is it a, a good quality for this particular item? Is it a bad quality once it's been tested, sometimes by the front line or the, the ultimate people who'll be using it at the end, might get their hands on it early, be able to test it and say, you know what, this isn't actually right, this isn't the way that we wanted it. So we have to go back, we need that quality report to monitor how it is tracking. Risk register, risk report and schedule forecasts to make sure it's on track. To do that, we'll need in a work performance information, which is, so we go in three phases. Data is the raw data, so just pure measurements. That turns into information. So this is our work performance information. And that's where we're turning it into things like percentages or, uh, or ratios, or basically comparing it to other information to, uh, to, so that we can show easily how something is tracking. For example, the, the cost performance index, you know, if it's, if it's uh, with that, as you'll see later on, if it's over one, we've delivered more than what, than what we had planned, or if it's less than one, we've delivered less than what we had planned. So definitely things like that. Um, but, or we might be 80% complete or 90% complete. So that work performance data turns into work performance information, and that's what we use to analyze how the project is going. We might need agreements as well. So you might have a procurement agreement for uh, if the project is outsourcing part of that work and that will include terms and conditions regarding what the seller is to perform or provide as part of their contract. Of course, with EEFs and OPAs, we might have uh, government or industry standards, uh, stakeholders expectations or risk thresholds. Maybe they'll have a high risk threshold or a low risk threshold. Very important to know so that we don't you know, burn any bridges there or don't give them any shocks you know, without communicating something properly. And the project management information systems, such as scheduling tools, resourcing tools, cost tools, uh, all of those things that we're putting that uh, project management data into so that it can turn into project uh, work performance information, of course. And then of course there might be templates, uh, specific reporting methods that you might have in a company, uh, issue management procedures or defect management procedures that are already existing in the company that you're working within that you have to abide by. Tools and techniques for monitor and control project work. Of course, as you've seen quite a lot, we need expert judgment. So the people who are experts in their particular area, whether it's the people who will be using the product ultimately, or in other things such as risk or contracts for procurement, all of those experts, you'll need to gather that information and help bring them on board to your project to help do those things or gather that expert knowledge as needed. You might have earned value analysis, so how is the project tracking? Um, that's where we're looking at there. Trend analysis, is it trending in the right direction? Is it trending you know, in the wrong direction? And of course, techniques to estimate duration and costs of your project. 
Data analysis is an important part of this where we might be looking at different alternatives. So maybe we, uh, if, if the scope needs to change or if the cost or schedule needs to be brought back on track, we have a few options. We might say, we, and you'll see these come up in future processes, we could fast track the, the, um, the, sh the project. And that's where we perform a few activities in parallel instead of side by side. So now they're all being done at the same time just by different people. Or we could crash uh, the project and that, that project schedule. And that just means that we're adding lots and lots of uh, cost and resources to try and get the job done. So there's a few alternatives and we'll need to analyze those and make a decision. A cost benefit of those, of those uh, alternatives as well. Earned value analysis you'll see in your cost and schedule processes. Root cause analysis of any problems that have come up. You'll see things like the, uh, uh, the fishbone diagram or the Ishikawa diagram later on in quality management and the quality processes. Trend analysis and variance analysis. And of course, we'll have decision making and meetings as part of the tools and techniques that you'll use for monitor and control project work. And decision making might include voting on some of those outcomes that need to be, uh, to be made, to have a decision on. So when you're voting, there are three different courses of action, and you'll see this in one of the key concept videos also. But unanimity is where everyone agrees. So we've had a vote and everyone agrees on the same course of action. The majority, is where more than 50% of the members of a group agree. So it's not 100%, but it is more than 50%. Now, plurality is the last one, and that's where just the largest block agrees. So it might be 30%, but then all the others are 20, 10, 10, and 5%, or, or whatever that is. So you might see that on the PMP exam also, but that's an example of voting and making a decision that way. Of course, you've also got autocratic decision making where someone, one person just says, this is the way it's going to be. And of course, multi-criteria decision analysis where you might have a table of, of items and uh, does it meet this criteria? Does it meet this criteria? Does it meet this criteria? And that's, that will help you make the decision for the different, uh, different alternatives that you have. Outputs for monitor and control project work. We've got work performance reports. So work performance data, which is that raw data, so actual the measurements of something happening, turns into information, so things like percentages or, you know, or, or ratios. And that information is nice, uh, easily digestible by people higher up, like the project sponsor or executives. And so those, that information can go into uh, work performance reports. So a nice report is then sent out and someone can clearly see how your project is tracking. It's not just raw data and figure, figures, um, but it's also not just percentages. You might now turn it into a nice chart or something similar that it, that it makes it even nicer for someone to read. This could also be physical or electronic, or you might send it out. It you know, could be things like traffic lights. So is your project red, amber, or green? Uh, you know, is it going well? Is it going badly? Uh, and, and all those sorts of things. Change requests will happen for anything that needs to be changed, especially a baselined document. So if a scope, schedule, or cost document has been locked at a, a certain point in time, then to make a change to that, you might need a change request and that might be for the reasons of corrective action, correcting something that, that needed to be corrected that wasn't done properly, uh, preventing something from happening in the future, so bringing that schedule back on track, for example, and defect repair if we're doing a quality testing and something hasn't ended up the way that they wanted or there's a defect in that particular item. And of course, all aspects of the project management plan can be updated as we're going along and monitoring and controlling project work. And project documents can be updated too. So we might have cost forecasts might be updated because they might change. Any issues might be added. Lessons learned might be added as, too as well. Risks and schedule forecasts might be uh, changed or updated as part of monitoring and controlling project work. And that is all of the detail of that process in the project management body of knowledge.